really serious question. Um, periconceptually, mm. pregnancy. If we do men first of all, um, I mean, if men smoke before they facilitate a conception, that can damage the chromosomes in the sperm and lead to deleterious effects in the in the child that's subsequently born, even cancers. I mean, is that the same with alcohol or can men just carry on merrily drinking while trying to conceive? I, I'm not sure it affects the, the genome, but it certainly affects um, the sperm production, I think. And, uh, oh, does it? And it so I think it, it, it's, it, it impedes fertility in men to some extent. Yeah. And what, what about women drinking round about conception and in pregnancy? It's not ideal, but I want to I want to qualify this, and, I, and this is important. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, a lot of women become very very anxious because they discovered they were they got pregnant because they were, uh, and they were drunk when they got pregnant. Yeah. And then you know there are people who would say, well, you know, you've damaged your baby, and, and the answer is, I think if if you don't carry on drinking when you're pregnant. You probably haven't damaged your baby, yep. but there are a small proportion of women who drink heavy, who cannot stop or don't care, and they can drink. Th and then that, that first trimester, heavy drinking, the first trimester, is has a really deleterious effect on the fetus. Yeah. So ideally, once as soon as you know you're pregnant, you you stop drinking, and ideally, when you're intending to get pregnant, you don't drink heavily. You know, you maybe just a glass of wine a day or, or no more because. We don't know exactly what the threshold is, and it's mm. it's probable that there's some effect at low levels, but it's the h very high levels that are the real problem. And and, and people don't realise that fetal alcohol syndrome is is, is causes more um, developmental problems than than Down syndrome and fragile X put together. So it's it is the most common cause of developmental problems learning disabilities in kids and and many of the kids end up being in homes all their lives because the, the behavior is, is so disrupted by the alcohol brain damage so part of the fetal alcohol syndrome is that the physical architecture of the child's brain is distorted it is and it's um, which in the same way as that you know their face looks different and, mm. and their hearts may be different but the, the, yeah they their brain, it's it works in a very different, and it's it's almost like they're in overdrive. Many of them have really severe hyperactivity. They're they're sort of relentlessly active. They can't sit still. They're you know it, it's like extreme ADHD, and it's probably got something to do with well, the brains are smaller, and I, I think just so we're now understanding that. One of the the brain is obviously a really complicated organ, but one of the sort of key principles is that the frontal cortex controls the rest of the brain generally. Yeah. And if your frontal cortex is damaged, like from a road traffic accident or too much drinking, you, it's harder to control your behaviour. And these kids are born without with, with less ability to to regulate their 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 behaviours, their activities, and and they they, they sometimes just can never learn. To, 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 to you know, to sit in class, to read a book, you know, to, they're just they're just in a you know, well, they're brain damaged essentially. That's my simplistic way to think about it. That the frontal cortex, the frontal lobes of the brain, are sort of controlling the lower, if you exactly. like, animal parts of the brain. It's exactly. it's the Phine Phineas Gage story, isn't it? The guy who. Um, oh yes. Well, tell people. If, yeah. yeah. Tell you tell your audience about that because that is a remarkable story. Oh, Phineas Gage. I, I, time it was actually quite early i think he was about 1830s was he and he, he was well, a, in the 1800s yeah in america yeah yes. and he, he, he was packing he had a bar he was packing in the dynamite yeah and the bar blew out and it went in there and out there and everyone assumed yep. he would die but he didn't he got better yep. But he became, he changed, I think he was a lay preacher, like like Clark Kent, the mild-mannered reporter, and he became a a bit of a lad round town by all accounts, and uh, <laughs> drinking, exactly. womanising, and because exactly. the, the control part of his brain had been damaged. Exactly, exactly. And that's very similar to what we see with people who have 
frontal injury, you know, motorbike cyclists coming off, smashing their front of the head, horse riders. Yeah, um, see and, the, and these kids, and of course we saw this in dementia, frontal dementia that often is associated. FTD, more, yeah. yeah. Yeah, behavioural disturbance, much more than memory disturbance. Yeah. In the old days, those old psychiatric boys called that PIX disease. It's now called frontotemporal yes. <laughs> dementia. Yeah, I can see I'm tweaking some of your distant memory circuits here, David. <laughs> well, I do remember. I remember learning about PICs. And, yeah, yeah. Horrible disease, though. My, my brother got frontotemporal dementia. It's a, in a sense, it's a bit funny because the disinhibition is like, uh, you know, so ludicrous, you know, but um, sadly it and develops. So like the last of, yeah, the, the lack of insight. Yes, the sort of, yeah. it's, it is like putting you, you know, going back to being really a baby, isn't it? You it know, really is impulsive you see something you want it you take it someone else someone else is like oh, what's mine why shouldn't i why shouldn't i have it you know? yeah yeah now i started drinking when i was about 19 or 20 about 19 so yeah 19 to 20 i started drinking really would i have done myself more home harm if i'd started drinking five years earlier almost Early certainly teenage. one of the one of the strange kind of laws of drinking, which applies across the Western world anyway, is that people start drinking on average about five years before they're allowed to buy and they become <laughs> alcoholic. They become dependent on average two to three years before they're allowed to buy. So, so the, the median age for becoming alcohol dependent in Britain is about 15. Kids start drinking for about 12. And uh, we know that 15 year half of 15 year olds, both men and women, girls and boys, are drunk at least once a month. Half of 15 year olds are drunk once a month, at least. And that's been the same for the last 35, 40 years. And, and so the answer is, for some of them, quite a lot of harm has already been done by the time they get to the drinking age. Because dependence is a he, you know, dependence on alcohol is a massive problem, because it's there everywhere. It's easy to get. You've got advertisements all the time encourage you to drink. So, it's a really difficult dependence to escape from because there is no escape. There's no way you can go where 